All right, you know what it is. This one here is about a sexy, you know, white female officer that got a hit put on her by the dirty white boys, which is WB in the prison. It's not a disrespect to them and the ABs. You know what I mean? So sit back. Let me ride. You know what I mean? And let's enjoy this, man. All right. Make sure you share this video, man. Make sure you like this video. I'm going to tell you about a sexy, 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 sexy white female. And I ain't got no jungle fever. You know what I mean? But she was bad. You know what I mean? You know, this a, is a, you know, a picture of a, but she had blonde hair. You know, this chick was built like Coco. You know, she was built like Coco from, uh, you know, Ice T girl. You know? Now, just to show you what I'm talking about, you know, here go another picture of a sexy female, you know. That's how she looked right there on the left. Now, on the right is a picture of what she would look like on the street. She was a volleyball player, cut up, looking nice, you know. But she went and got a job in uh, correctional, you know. So she started working at Atwater USP. I was there within about 2009, you know, is when she came in. This white girl had, I mean, they used to wear the police uniform like you see her with the, you know, the long pants, the dickies and all that. But she filled out a pair of dickies like no other, you know. I'm just keeping 100. Now, no perverted time. Just give me all the visuals so y'all understand. Now, this girl was so bad, you know, when she walked. Every head in the unit, if she's in the unit, or on the compound, if she was walking on the compound, would get whiplash. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what whiplash is? Well, you break your neck. That's that stop traffic look, you know? That's how this female was. And I got to give her a gunshot. I got to give her a gunshot. This girl was so bad, right? And she was mad cool. And that was her problem. She is how an old man like me that been down since 93, and this is, you know, like 08, 09, like I said, you know, got hip that white females was now into black, you know, males. Because when I was on the street, we stayed in our lane. If you see uh, a white dude, Walking with a black girl, all the black girls would be like, oh, he's a sellout. And, you know, that was that time. Where now you don't hear nothing about the sellout no more. If you seen a white dude with a black girl, you automatically said, oh, he must be, you know, he must got a vicious tongue game. And, you know, he's spending money on her. You know, it couldn't be that it was for love. This is that time. Look at that female on the screen. So here it is at this time, 2007. I must have been there, let me see, I've been about 14, 15 years at the time. So now when she comes walking in the compound, she mad cool. She love hip-hop. She love hip-hop videos, you know. And she was just cool with vibing with everybody. Meaning she'll go up to the white guy's TV while they watching something. And, you know, because white guys normally watch like National Geographic and, uh, you know, uh, uh, but yeah, that's Nat Geo. You know, um, IDTV, and she'll watch a little of the program with him, and she'll comment on the program, and, you know, dudes was conversate back and forth to her. But when she walked over to the BTTV, and they had the black girl, this is the time when they had the girl, I even remember her name. They, they had the girl, I should have had a picture of her. Um, but I do mine's freestyle from the head because this is no make made up, no capping, no fabrication, just keeping it 100. But they had the girl that was out from that outcast video named Katoy. Big shout out Make a what? to Katoy. Yeah. All right, all right, calm down, calm down, calm down. Relax, man. 
as you see, I got my, you know, sound effects back. Now, Katoy was the first one we seen with the crazy body. They said 50 Cent brought her out. Big shout out to 50 Cent, you know. But Katoy was in the um the, the the outcast video, you know, with Big Boy. And she was bad, you know. And this girl had a, a body, you know, like that. And she was white. I've never seen a white girl with cheeks like that. When I got locked up, all they had was big breasts, and that's where Pamela Anderson came from. So they had no, you know, derriere. You know what I mean? No, they just didn't. It was just flat, you know. They back was into the rectum, you know. But here comes this white girl walking in prison and blew everybody's mind from she walked in. When she walked in, she was mad cool. She'd go up to the BET TV and she'd see the brothers watching the you know, the videos, and she knew the rappers, she knew the dancers, she knew the music, she knew the producer, because she was really into it, and she got along with everybody. I mean, everybody. So she started hanging around the BT TV, because in the prison, you got the Serrano TV, the Border Brothers TV, you know, the, 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 the Native American TV, the White Boy TV, the Black Guys TV, you know, and... She would go to each TV just the whole conversation because she's one of those females that, you know, was just trying to pay her bills. So she didn't get in it to be an officer. You know what I mean? She got into it to correct the wrongs of the officer. Because when she worked with other, you know, male COs, she would check them when they did stupid, you know, violations. And they would try and push the issue and call the lieutenant and tell the lieutenant we did this and we did that. And when they came down, she'll stand up for him and say, nah, lieutenant, that's not the way it went down. So the officers, of course, you know, started hating on her. The white dudes was hating on her because she was into, you know, the black guys and the black TV. But she talked to the white guys too, but she had more in common with us. So she come over there to the BT TV and you got Katoy up there shaking her cheeks and doing her thing and, you know, a little light twerking with her cheeks popping. And she'll walk over there and she'd be like, oh, I could do that. And she'll start popping her cheeks. I've been down 14, 15 years. You got dudes around me been down 20 and 30 years. And here go a white girl with ass we never seen and she's popping the cheeks. So we looking like, what the f is going on? You know, like, what are you eating? You know what I mean? But when I got locked up, eh, let me ride, because you know that's what I like to do. When I got locked up and I had Club 2000 and I brought the girls up from Miami, big shout out, you know, to Desire, Passion, you know, Cheeseburger. These are the Miami strippers I brought up, just, just to name a couple. Baby D, you understand? Black Cat. Y'all remember those names if y'all from back in the day. If y'all know where any of these females is, if you any, um, any of them is watching it, contact me because I'm getting ready to do a vicious documentary. But, you know, the black girls, when I had the Miami versus New York, you know, in the Pop the Coochie and the Doodle Brown and the Wet T-Shirt contest, the, the, the New York girls, no disrespect to my homies, but they just couldn't hang. They didn't even know how to pop their cheeks, you know? And then as I'm in jail... I see Miley Cyrus on the wrecking ball. Miley Cyrus on a wrecking ball coming out with her little skinny self, no disrespect to her. And she jumped down and she started shaking the cheeks. What that, that, that they call, you know, um, they called it Pop the Coochie and Doodle Brown then. But they gave it a new name when Miley did it. They called it twerking. Now everybody calls it twerking, but the props to me go to Miami. I had a few brothers, when I mentioned this before, that said the props go to Louisiana. Now, I was in Miami from um, 87 when I came out of state prison, Trenton. And that's where I seen it. So that's why I get the props there. If anybody got anything to dispute that, I'm open for suggestions. It is what it is. You understand? So, you know, we, we, we're doing this video because we want to make sure everybody understand how this thing works. Now, you know, let's ride back to the prison. We got the, 
white girl, she come up to the BT TV and she watching and the girls is twerking and every eye is glued to the screen and we like, oh, with our mouth open. Yeah, me too, keeping it 100. They don't do no faking here. So she'll stand and she'll be like, oh, that ain't hard. I can do that. And she'll just start popping the cheeks. And the white dudes could see our TV from where they sitting at and they used to get in their body that this chick was over there shaking the cheeks for black dudes, you know? But she was just being herself and, you know, just cool. So now, as she, she, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, she had a great shape, you know? She had that, like I said, surfer body. That's why I put that picture up there. But, you know, she was, you know, looking sexy in a uniform, you know? Let's get this straight. So the white dudes used to really hate that this female was over there with the black dudes. So, you know, she hollered at everybody, even the Native Americans, you know, the Sereno, she hollered at everybody. Now, after she did that, the white dudes would sit there watching and they'll hate, but they really hated how much attention she played to us over there at the black TV. So now, out of nowhere, here she comes. He rolling now, and she dancing for us, and, you know, not really for us, just having fun, you know what I mean? Letting us know she could do that, showing us she could do it, and so on and so on. The white dudes looking, they in their body, so they start talking among themselves, and, of course, they called her what they call in prison. I give y'all mad jewels, you know? That's why I say, you know, the game is to be sold, not told. Cash App is on the screen. Make sure it says that it was created in 2020. Go all the way in to make sure it was created in 2020. The game is to be sold, not told. My gangsters and gangsters know this. The suckers. Rats. And let's get it again. Suckers and rats don't like that. Do I give a crap? Ah, you know, it is what it is. But let's give them a gunshot. You know? They get a round of applause. They get a round of applause. After a round of applause, we got to give up the AK-47. But now, check it, right? So this female is over there, and the white dudes is looking they in their body. They're like, yo, what's going on? You know what I mean? Why? So they pulled her up. They said, yo, why are you always over there with the black dudes? And she's like, nah, I just trying to be, you know, cool with everybody. Got know everybody in here for a minute. They stressed out, so and so. And she's trying to explain herself to them. But they're not trying to hear it. All they're looking at is that she's a race traitor. You know, so they wasn't feeling her because she was spending a lot of time at the BET TV and all the black dudes like her. You know, I used to talk crap to her. I used to tell her straight up. I said, yo, you know, we started calling her Coco because we give the female officers names of the big stars the same as the he cipher, monkey ciphers, pick up names of the big stars. We had a Courtney Cox. We had a Britney Spears. We had a J-Lo. You know what I mean? You know, don't know the he cipher, monkey ciphers gave themselves the names, but us inmates, we normally gave them the name Coco or, uh, 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 uh what's her name? I just said Coco or J-Lo, you know? There was a female, uh, let's ride back to Lee County. I'm in Lee County. There was a girl that I know was 100% straight. We're in Lee County. She come to uh, visit me. Of course, she bought the pack. That's what they do. If you're not bringing the pack, don't come see me. Get mad all you want. I'm just giving you the real because we don't do no fake in here. If you're going to come see me, you got to bring me some weed. You know what I mean? And if you're smooth enough with it, then we let you, you know, bring a little dog food so we can both eat, you know, and I can make sure my people's on a pound eat. Now, we in Lee County, and this Spanish girl was about five foot one, five foot two, and she had a crazy... I mean, everybody called her J-Lo. No, I'm thinking, you know, is this normal? <laughs> you know? So while we sitting in there, in the visit, she came walking in. She worked in the mayor room. If y'all was in Lee County, you know. I say things that people stamp me in the comments, so I don't worry about the... What is it? The trolls and the haters. Because my people stamp it. If you was in Lee County back in 2003, 4, and 5, that's when I left in 2005. If you was in Lee County, you know about J Lo that worked in the mayor room. This girl was ridiculous. She had a little, little upper body and waistline like this with these nice little mongo signs of fresh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, Florida sun kiss orange breasts. You know what I mean? And when she walk, everybody walk behind her wherever she going. She might be taking the mail all the way to the other end of the compound and you late for class over here and get ready to mix the move, but you know, you're going to follow her all the way over there just to see them cheeks jiggle. But we in the visiting hall, and the female that I was with, and she was bad too. She said, oh, my God, you see that ass on that chick? This is a female I know is straight. That's a straight dime, even on street standard. Because when we say dime in the prison, everything is a dime. I'm going to tell you one about this old sea hag female that dude was in love with. You know, that wound up putting her work in. So if you want to hear about the old sea hag that put her work in, y'all make sure you hit me, you know, in the comments. And I'll tell you about the sea hag that put her work in, you know. But anyway, so when she came out, the girl said, damn. And I looked at her. I said, what's up? And she said, nah, you know, no he cipher, monkey cipher. But, you know, god damn that. Damn, this girl got a crazy butt on her. I think she was Italian. She wasn't even Spanish. You know, J-Lo was really Italian, but we called it J-Lo because she had the J-Lo, you know, ass. So when she did that, I looked and I said, damn, that is big, you know. But it fit her perfect, perfectly performed, uh, proportioned, you know. So we sitting there and er, let's ride back to Atwater. So now we got this white surfer chick banging. You know what I mean? Let me get that picture up there so y'all see. You know, I got my little visuals working. I learned to, how to do all this from the equipment y'all brought me from the Cash App, and I appreciate it. This is how I give you all the good content. This is how this girl look. So one day we in the joint, and the white dudes is drinking, and this cell is right under the black TV so they can't see it because they don't want to be where. They want to be by where they can look at, out the door and see their own TV so when we on lockdown, they can watch their TV. So they behind our cell where they're going to see the back of our TV because they don't want to watch BET at all. But they can see the Nat Geo TV and the uh, Investigation Discovery TV and the Discovery Channel. The white dudes love Discovery. If y'all was in a prison, you already know about the white dudes with this. So while we up in this joint, uh, she's standing up in front of the cell. And she's doing her little twerk dance. She's just standing there and she's looking at the TV and she's twerking while she's looking at the TV. Ain't bothering nobody, just twerking, right? And the white dudes is pissed. They in there drinking and they ran out of wine and they decided to bring down another batch that they had a little early so they could continue their drinking. And she peeked the move. So Shorty walks over there to the cell and opens the door and catches them with a five-gallon milk bag, you know, full of wine. And they getting ready to, you know, shine it to make that moon shine. So she walks in and she tell him, oh, no, nah, y'all ain't supposed to have that. Dump that out so I don't have to call the lieutenant, you know. Any other police tell them that they're going to dump it out with no problem. But being that this female did that and she was with the black dude, they said, man, get out of here, you race traitor. You know, that's what one of them told her. Get out of here, you race traitor. You know, so she said, what? She said, you heard what I said, you always over there with them, you know, use the N-word on us, you know? And she's like, what are you talking about? They said, man, you better get out my cell. So the white dude jumped up and got in the face, you know? She backed up out the cell. So when she got out of the cell, we all watching. But as a convict, she's still a cop, regardless how cool she is with us, regardless that the fact is that she got a job just to pay her bills. She's still a cop, and you know, and we despise, we despise cops. So we couldn't get involved with that. But they backed her out, and she came out the room, and she crying, and, yeah, she got emotional. She crying, and she went in the office, and she called the lieutenants. So the lieutenants come up there. So when the, this is how wild Atwater was. Lieutenants come up there to the joint, and when they come to the joint, they said, what's going on, what's going on? And she said, nah, they got wine over there and sell 205, I mean 105. So they all walk over there to 105. White boy's still in there with the wine. And they said, come on, you know y'all ain't supposed to have that. And they said, yeah, but we don't need that race trader telling us nothing. And they're like, nah, she's still a correction officer. They said, nah, she ain't no correction officer. She ain't nothing. She a race trader. This is what they tell the lieutenant. So the lieutenant, to show you how crazy this jail was, they sided with the white dudes. They said, you know what, you're right. Go ahead, finish shining your wine and doing your thing. And they went to the, you know, to Coco, the, 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 the white female correction officer, and told her, come on, that's it, we're moving you to another unit, you know? And she's like, for what? 
And she said, nah, they told me they got a hit out on you because you've been with the black guys too much and we don't want you to get in any problems. And, you know, we don't want to be responsible for that. So she's like, you're just going to move me because, you know, they violating the law making wine. You know what I mean? And they asked and said, what, you want to write them up? And she said, no, I don't want to want to write them up. And they said, well, neither do I, because we write them up, it's going to be a big ride up in here. So let them drink their wine, they're in their sales, they're minding their business, but you can't stay in this unit anymore because they labeled you a race trader, and you never know when one of them might put their hands on you. So she's like, oh, I can't believe this. So they moved her over to another unit over there by, you know, my man Larry Moe. Big shout out to Larry Moe. Mecca what? Big shout out. Big shout out to Larry Moe. All right, all right, relax. Relax, man. Let me tell the story. All uh, right. So they moved over there by my man Larry Moe unit, and there was a dude, I think he was from St. Louis. Y'all always want a St. Louis story. There was a dude from St. Louis over there, a little short, smooth black dude. So he over there, he kicking it to her, and he did the ultimate fly guy move for prison. You know, he said, look, me and my mom's having problems because she feel like, you know, um, I'm not doing the right thing and, you know, I'm still on my bullshit. And, you know, if you don't mind, you know, I'd like you to talk to her and just let her know I've been chilling, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, ultimate game. Y'all ain't up on this, you know what I mean? So she said, oh, what if I could do? Because I definitely, you know, understand about how a mother could feel about her son and he gives her his mother's number. She takes his mother's number. She go home that night and she calls his mother and talk to his mother. And his mother's old G out of St. Louis, you know, from the loop, you know, as uh, Nellie said. So she hollers at his mother and his mother puts a bid in and say, man, please look out for my baby. He's been wilding, but, you know, he's been chilling now. Da, da, da. He's a good kid. He just needs somebody to talk to. And with all the men there not having a female to talk to, he fall into the act of violence. And, you know, we just need whatever assistance we could get for you to help. You know, my son, da, 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 da. But if you need anything, feel free to call the number back. And she went through the whole spill and befriended the correction officer. Exit officer, a big J-Lo come back the next day, and she runs down the conversation to him. So my man know he got it now. So now they kicking it, da-da-da. So the mom's got his number, uh, got the J-Lo number. J-Lo got her number, and the whole boy in the joint. So every day she come in, she gives him a message from her mother. Excuse me, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? I like to do mine so early morning. So she goes in and she kicks it to him and she tells him what's going on. You know, that mom sent a little message and he gives a message to go back and they kick it all the time. Now, me and, you know, J-Lo was cool from in the block because I used to tell, you know, I, I talk my crap. You know, I, I, I talk my crap. I used to tell J-Lo crap like, uh, you know, like, man, I ain't never seen a white girl with cheeks like that, but I never met a white girl that can handle this anaconda. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she looked like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I never met a white girl that could handle this anaconda. And she said, I don't know how many white girls you've been with. I said, no, nah, I ain't never been with a white girl yet because in the hood that I'm at, there was always black girls. And if there was white girls, they was in the strip club. They were the black girls. They had no ass in it in the pill as much as the, you know, the black girls did with all the ass. But you're the first one I see with ass. But I know a few of my homies that done bone the back out a few of the little slim white girls with the Pamela Anderson chest. And, you know, they always said it was whack. You know, she was like, oh, like, oh this ain't whack. You know what I mean? And I used to tease her, and every time I used to see her, I used to be like, yo, what up? What up, whack J-Lo? You know what I mean? And she'll talk crap. Boy, I put it on you and I, da 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 And, you know, we get somewhere, but it was moving. She was feeling me. Yeah, I mean, I know my rap is a little unorthodox, but I've been down since 93. Like I said, this 2008, 2009. So J-Lo talking mad crap to me. I'm talking to her. I'm saying, well, I heard that y'all, you know what I mean, you know, just like to suck it long. But don't not a sucker, just like to go up and down. And she introduced me to a word I never heard before. Call me lame, call me green, I keep it 100. She said, well, if you've been with a real white girl, you know we have no gag reflex. I said, gag who, what, flex? She said, gag reflex. I said, what is that? She said, well, you take it all the way in our throat. You know what I mean? I'm like, what? She said, man, I said, I never met a black girl could take this all the way in her throat. She said, oh, man, I take it in my throat now, this and now that. And that was the conversation because she just liked to kick it. So 
you know, everybody knew I'm hollering at her because she used to always come by and she would talk shit to me. So we walked by, she be like, hey, Anaconda. So the homies were here. So word got back to the dude that had her talking to his mother that she was over there on my joint. So, you know, show me how players do, you know. St. Louis dude, you know, I'm in the yard one day. I knew him really good, too. So I'm working out on a bar and all that. There's this other white female out there, single white female. She was bad, too. Bad, 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 bad. I'm not gonna say her name, but her name, but we called her Miss A because her name started with A. If you was in Atwater, y'all know Miss A. So I used to be out there with Miss A talking the same type of crap. So my man pulled up on me, he said, Yo, you, he said, Yo, no disrespect, family. I know you're a player like me, and we all trying to come up, but I got this one right here. She already dealing with my moms and everything good, da 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 da. You know what I mean? So I said, right, I'm gonna respect that, I'm gonna let you get that. But the only thing I want is when she do bring you something. You know, some cigarettes or whatever. Make sure you break me off. He said, you got that OG. <laughs> you know what I mean? I said, well, as long as I'm going to get broken off, I'll fall back. So I fell back on and just kept pushing on Miss A. Now, this thing was so out of control. You know what I mean? She up in the other unit. She dealing with dude's mom. But like I said, the same way dude came and told me that she was dealing with his mom. He ran his mouth and told somebody he shouldn't have. One thing about in prison, you know what I mean? Even on the street. If someone else know the secret, is no longer a secret. See, that's the jewels, you know what I mean, that I give you over here, Unique Mega Audio. If someone else knows the secret, it's no longer a secret. It's only a secret when only you know. But once you tell someone else, it's no longer a secret. So everybody knew that his, she was talking to his mom, da da da, da you know what I mean? And... You know, the white girls was furious now. I mean, the white dudes, you know, excuse me for saying girls. The white men, you know, was furious behind her pushing up on, you know, this St. Louis dude like that. And she giving him rap and they tried to rap to her. But they had nothing in common. Because even though she, she did the volleyball and the surfing thing, she liked it. The, 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 the chat like on Anaconda. Could you blame her? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what they say. Once you go black, you don't go back. But anyway, so we in a joint, and now the white dudes put a hit out on this female. But my man is already caught up because she knows his mother. She's calling his mother, and they never supposed to do that. So he basically bagged her. So he got the white dudes talk about they're going to do this and do that to her. So, you know, big shout out to the St. Louis dudes. Mecca what? Big shout out to St. Louis dudes. Yeah. Yeah. The St. Louis dudes, being that they had a vent, uh, what they call it, a vintage interest, you know, in the movement of Coco, they pushed up on the white shot callers and they said, yo, no disrespect. I understand how y'all feel about the race and all that. But, you know what I mean? She chose to deal with the black dudes. We ain't trying to get into nothing. You know, we know that's a cop, but, you know, she dealing with my man now, so it's beyond the cop thing. You know, so we respectfully asking y'all to fall back on the bullshit. Because if y'all want to get it popping, we can get it popping. Because right now, that's our bread and butter. And she getting ready to bring us a couple of cartons of cigarettes. And we don't need no problem. They ain't say a couple of cartons of cigarettes. They say, yo, we're doing certain things and we don't need any problems. You understand what I'm saying? To, to get in the way of what we're doing. Because you never tell your right hand what your, back, uh, uh, what your left hand is doing. So... Shorty is up in the joint. The white boys is furious, but they're not going to jump out there on us. Let's just keep it 100. So while they're doing all that now, they had a fight in the yard, you know, a big fight in the yard, you know, with the white dudes. So when they had the big fight in the yard, she's scared to death, you know. So she goes over there by the dude that she's talking to his mother and, you know, the St. Louis crew and, you know, everybody's around and, you know, she's secure there. But the white dude was looking to make a move on her. And you know, but you know, I like to leave y'all in suspense, so I'm gonna tap out right there and you know, let y'all get to the rest. But bottom line is to sum it up, you know, he wound up getting rid of, you know what I mean? So, you know, that that that's you know, Coco, you know, just so you see, you know, what Coco looked like, you know. Coco was bad all day. That's how she looked. But let me tap out, man. I Cheers, 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 the crime, cheers, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime. Oh, hey. Can 
of 26 yeah. He back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift, Trust. you stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in Harlem uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom back. Drop the book, you should go and get it go The get Instagram it. page and the YouTube, you could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in Real. Sit front row and get jewels from a kingpin uh -huh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops make an audio Get, get it live like two G's in the night yeah. Drop top beamer so shine yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine Treat her like my past, she behind me Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan No cap, this a roaring uptown They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative So take heed, homie, lend the air He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars It's about buying property to make the community yard So we can give back to the youth them Cause they the truth them And bless up to all the rude them Of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up, ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in hall. Uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. Go the Instagram it. page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get jewels from a kingpin. Uh -huh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man. That probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men.